So to start with, um, the most common method for using uh, for generating IPSC is transduction of the four factors. Um, shown here is the Yamanaka factors. And uh, after a black box even, which takes anywhere between three to four weeks, you end up with IPSC colonies. Um, so the biggest bottleneck right now, one, is the efficiency of IPSC formation, depending on what kinds of cells you start with. The efficiency is really low. And the second thing, the second bottleneck is how do you detect these um, emerging IPSC colonies? Depending on the expertise of the users and the field of pluripotent stem cells, people can either pick it really easily or there's always like a issue on what clones you place your bet on. So when it comes to efficient methods, there are several methods starting from viral, non-integrating, and more small molecule methods such as uh, mRNA, microRNA, and small molecules. But one of the methods that we've really worked on is a non-integrating viral method um, based on Sendai virus. Um, the reason why this method is superior to the other current methods is its efficiency. For um, it is a non, it's based on Sendai virus, which is a RNA virus. Um, so again, coming back to the different methods that are out there, if you were to, this is a, a graph that I took from a published paper. Um, if you look at the efficiency versus the safety, obviously methods such as small molecule, microRNA, RNA, and protein, uh, they don't leave a footprint, uh, they're extremely safe to use in a clinical setting. However, the efficiency of generating iPSC right now is, is pretty low at this point of time. Uh, the highest efficiency so far has been obtained with lent, uh, viral methods such as Lenti and Retro. Uh, more recently, the Cytotune, which I'll show you some data, actually excels the efficiency that you can actually get with these traditional viral systems. And at the same time, it's relatively much safer because it's an RNA virus and it's non-integrating. Therefore, it will not leave a footprint in the genome of the cells or the iPSCs that are created. So this is, again, a brief introduction. This was a system that was developed by a company in uh, Japan called um, uh, DNAVEC. Uh, uh, the original paper was published. There has been several papers since then, starting from uh, um, generation of iPSCs, not only with fibroblasts, but also uh, blood cells. So I won't go into more, more details there. But what I would like to show you is that using the Cytotune system that we actually sell as a product, the, system, the, the process of generating iPSC is extremely streamlined. Uh, the four factors comes in four tubes, which can be transduced overnight onto MEFs. Uh, most of our protocols right now are for uh, fibroblasts, but we are developing methods for other cell types, mainly blood lineages. Um, after it's a one-time contact, you don't have to do repeated transduction, so in that way it's really workflow friendly. And after um, transduction, um, you have to give it a, around three to four weeks. At the, at the beginning of three weeks is when you start colony formation, and at the end of four weeks you have sufficient colonies to uh, pick up and choose. There, there are actually more colonies than you really want because there are uh, way too many colonies there. So what we've done um, uh, here, this, this method actually shows you that, that it's integration free. Using PCR, we were able to show that there's no, absolutely no viral genome left in the clones that were established. This is 10 independent clones that were generated. And you can also use an antibody, although I would say that the antibody is not very uh, great because you can see the haze in a negative cell type and you actually can tell whether it's negative only when you have a true positive control because the positive staining is so much more robust. These cells are pluripotent both in their marker expression and differentiate into uh, different lineages when randomly differentiated by, via embryoid body formation. Um, these clones were all generated on feeder dependent systems in KSR based media, but since then we've also been able to generate iPSC clones um, both under feeder free conditions using a um, um, Stempro SFM media, as well as xeno-free conditions, which is basically a KSR xeno-free uh, media in the presence of growth factor cocktails on human feeders. 